Welcome back to HGTV Handmade. It's Throwback Thursday again, and today we're taking it back to 2005 with another episode of Ask DIY. But today, we're featuring our first male host. This DIY requires a few more power tools than our normal project, but the result is definitely worth the extra effort. Let's go see what he has to show us. It's time now for a question about antiques. Trudy in Tahlequah, Oklahoma doesn't know what to do with her collection, so she sent in this email saying, I've collected some antique doorknobs and I'd like to put them to use. Do you have any creative ideas? Woodworking and antiques expert Bruce Johnson has an idea, and it's decorative but functional as well. He's in the workshop now with all your step-by-step -step instructions. Well, Trudy, when I got your question, it did get me to thinking because I've had some doorknobs kicking around in the shoebox for a long time. I'd often thought about making a hat rack out of them, but the problem with the hat rack is that you never get to see the doorknobs. So how about if we make a rack that you can hang aprons on and keep it in your kitchen? And it's pretty easy to do, and you can use up those doorknobs. And for those of you who don't have any old doorknobs and haven't been collecting them like Trudy has been, you can go out and buy these at salvage shops. They're very inexpensive. The less decorative ones you can get for a couple of dollars a piece. Although if you want to get those glass ones with the beveled edges on it, you might have to spend $15 or $20. But try digging through their remainders and through their boxes of the, the sort of leftover doorknobs. And oftentimes when you get them, you're going to find out they may still be attached to the spindle, which we don't need. So we're just going to simply take out that set screw and pull the doorknob off and we'll set the spindle aside. You want to save that because someday you may be doing a house restoration where you're going to need that. But now we've got the problem of mounting this onto our board. And as you can see, we've got a square hole in there. What I prefer to do is use a wooden dowel to attach it. But of course, now we've got the problem of putting a, a round dowel into a square hole. Easy enough solved. Take a utility knife and just square off the ends of this. Pretty easy to do and give it a little bit of a taper. It should be just about enough. See how that's going to fit. Take off a little bit more. It doesn't have to be very exact, but we do want a snug fit. Yeah, that's going to work fine. So let's put a little bit of woodworker's glue in here. It isn't going to take much glue to hold this in place because, in fact, there isn't going to be a lot of stress on it. Put that on, tap it with our hammer. All right, it's a nice snug fit in there. We're going to set that aside, let that begin to dry. And while that is happening, let's go over and take a look at the board we're going to use for the back of our rack. Now, in this case, I'm using a piece of leftover pre-finished flooring. And Trudy, you may have some woodwork left over if you remodeled your kitchen recently, or you may want to go with another piece of old wood that would match your, the doorknobs. In this case, I'm going to put my doorknobs about eight inches apart. So with the first one, I'll come in four inches to put it, and then the second one will be eight from that. And since my board is four inches wide, I'm going to center it right there at two inches up. Now the dowel I'm using is three-eighths of an inch thick, so I've got a drill bit on here that is also three-eighths of an inch. We're going to drill a hole partway through, but not completely through this board. All right, pretty simple. Now, obviously, back to our doorknob, we've got more dowel on here than we're going to need. So I'll take a saw and a piece of scrap wood here, get this lined up. I'm just going to saw off all but about a half an inch of this dowel. You could do this on a table saw if you wanted to, but actually it's a little bit easier to do it with a hand saw. We can just break that guy right off. Great. And back to our woodworker's glue and over here to our board and we'll put a little bit of glue in there as well. Like I say, not going to be a lot of stress on here so we don't need a lot of glue. And our 3 8 inch dowel will fit right in there. Always a good idea to give that a turn to spread that glue around. Then we're going to let that dry. Now Trudy, you can make this board as long as you want. Mine happens to be about 24 inches long. Like I say, I space them every 8 inches but you know what? Those are decisions you can make depending on what you're going to display on here. And in terms of hanging it, there are special little fasteners you can get that will hook on the back of here. It's a good way to hold it up. This gives you the ability to move it around if you want to change it around. Or you could always drill another hole directly through the board and disguise that by after you put a screw in there with a little wooden button on there. And that would disguise that very neatly. Hey, listen, you can get these steps to do this if you want to make your own uh, rack using old doorknobs on our website. So be sure to check that out. But Trudy, I hope this gives you an idea for how you might display those antique doorknobs you've collected 
or for anybody else who wants to start a collection and to display it. Well, toss it back to you. This project isn't just limited to aprons. Personally, I'd use it to organize my necklace collection. What else would you guys use old doorknobs for? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next week with a new Throwback Thursday. Bye, guys!